to bow down before your throne. See your face, I cry out, because you're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Jesus, King of kings.
Lord Jesus. Oh, we worship the King of Kings, said the Lord of Lords. We worship you, Jesus. We declare that you are the King of our hearts, Lord. We declare that you are the Holy God, and we come to you, Lord, in, gra in gratitude, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12, it says here, it says here, in Him, in Jesus, through faith in Jesus, that we can approach God with freedom and confidence. The reason why we can stand here before the Lord and have this sense of worship, this sense of freedom is because of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ upon our lives. The forgiveness of our sins. And so we come before the Lord bringing our hearts to Him, bringing our praise and worship to Him, bringing our lives to Him, and declaring that He is the Master and Savior of our lives. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before You today. Oh, with surrendered hearts. With hearts of faith, Lord. With hearts that are established and rooted in the love of Jesus Christ. We declare that You, that you are the King of our hearts. That You are the King of our lives, Lord. That Your way is our way. Your desire is our desire. Your plans are going to be our plans of our lives. And so we come to you in praise, singing with confidence, singing with freedom, knowing that you are there, knowing that you are at work in our hearts, knowing that you are at work in our lives. Lord, we come before you and bring our families. We bring to you our prayer concerns. We bring to you broken relationships. We bring to you unanswered prayers, Lord, because we know that you hear all of these things. You hear our prayers. You see our hearts. You see our lives, Lord, and you answer our prayers and so we come to you Lord with expectant hearts that you would move in our hearts Lord you have a word for us this morning and so as we listen to your word oh Lord God Lord meron kayong specific word that is that will that will speak to our hearts that will that will bring forth faith upon our hearts that will strengthen us and that will direct us and guide us and so this we pray in Jesus name amen and amen so let's worship the Lord hallelujah let's give the Lord a loud clap of offering Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Before sitting down, can you just look for five people and make a fist bump tayo for five, five people and just say, we are here, we are here. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Jesus loves you. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I believe that the Lord has a message for us today, no? The Lord says that surprise, I have a surprise gift for you. This morning, we were surprised because five minutes before the start of 8 o'clock, nagkaroon ng brownout and we don't have assurance when magkakaroon ng, ng electricity. But the Lord moved and that's how it is when two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus. The Lord's presence is here. The Lord... The Lord's presence will bring a word, of, uh, a word of life, a word of rebuke, a word of encouragement, and a word of comfort to us. No? So let's be excited to come to the Lord. We want to welcome uh, the, our special guests, no? our first-timers for today. We hope that we can get to know you better. No? This end of September, the, end, the last Sunday of September, we will, are going to have a workers' assembly together. So what we're going to do is that ngayon pa lang, please already set aside your calendars for this and already message uh, uh, the co-workers of your ministry. So after 10 o'clock service, we're going to ask all of you to stay, stay and then we're going to eat lunch together and then afterwards, we're going to have an afternoon of worship and ministry time together. No? Uh, that's going to be on September 25. No? That's going to be our workers' assembly. So just set aside your time and be there. If you're not yet part of our worker and you'd like to join this parang half-day retreat, no? uh, you are well, certainly welcome to join us as well. You can just uh, 
pre-register so that we know that you are coming. Uh, today is also the start of our membership and ministry class. We do this in order to share what the church is all about, what the ministry culture is about, what the, what the structures are, and who the people to talk to in, in, in this place. No? What the teachings are, why we do what we do, what are the beliefs and everything. So this is going to start at 1 p.m. on site. So if you're not taken our membership and ministry class, uh, stay behind after the service and kita kits tayo sa room 401. Okay? Alright? Uh, our youth are going to have a athletic league as well, no? Uh, they're gonna do some basketball, badminton, and uh, other stuff, no? Actually, during the, the school vacation, they do it every Friday. Um, a group of 20, uh, I don't know, young men, basta mga boys, and then eventually, I think the girls also uh, created their own activity. They usually go to a place, they do basketballs and stuff, no? So, what they're gonna do is that they're gonna open this up to the big church, uh, and open it up to the friends, to the schoolmates, to the classmates. And so, if you have a pamangkin, if you have a kid in this place, please connect them to this activity, uh, because it's gonna be something good. Okay, can we have Ate Maris to come up here? Uh, uh, this is going to be our, uh, to give us an update no, of our building project. Okay, Ate Maris is one of our teachers, one of our board members, and one of our uh, worship team as well. Yeah, OG, OG. Okay. Good morning po, sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Pastor Josie, sa introduction. And I represent the building committee to give you an update sa progress ng building project natin. So, and I'd like to share with you the title of it. So you can, we can see the changes no, that we have the past few months. And we thank you for your generous giving to make this happen for the house of the Lord. But bagong lahat, let me ask, <coughs> meron ba kang kanta pagka rainy season? Ako meron. Yeah. Ano yung tuwing umuulan at kapiling ka. <laughs> Favorite ko yan. Why? I'll let you know. Next slide please. Kasi kapiling po natin yung overflow ng gutter at saka splattering sound ng rain, di ba? And if you would remember yung pastor natin, he, he had to stop the preaching kasi nga nagko-compete yung sound ng rain sa, sa kanyang boses. So, we have modified our trusses as you can see. Uh, dati, if you would remember, it looks like that on your on top, on top right. But now, um, now, it's all neat and clean, right? And uh, thank God for that. Amen? Yeah. And also, um, uh, we have uh, acoustic panels. You can see on your left and your right. And also, di ba, dati, sabi ko nga, maingay yung, yung uh, rain, no? But now we have placed, uh, we have placed uh, this panel so that ma, ma reduce yung sound, no? And also, we have an air exchange system. You can see on the top right, yan, mga, ano po yan, uh, yung magkakaroon proper circulation of air, binihigop niya yung, yung air, and then, uh, pinifilter nila, and then, bumabalik po, fresh, fresh air, no? We thank the Lord for our mechanical engineer na volunteer natin, si Engineer Miguel Martinez, and other consultants, and contractor like Ikero ni Sister Tini Tantongko here, and for the help they had done, sa act to accomplish this. Marami pa pong nagawa, no? But hindi ko maiisa-isa. Um, yeah. So, if you can see our backdrop, uh, maganda na siya. It was black before, right? Now, it's, uh, it looks, uh, it looks nice, no? And also, our acoustic panel walls. Thank you, Lord, sa mga provision niya, no? May ID designer tayo, si Miss Joy Ngo, and uh, our engineer, John Agstano sa design and uh, supervision ng work. Parang mga lihimayas natin sila, di ba? Praise God for these people. <clears throat> Yon. So, uh, next slide po. As you can see, uh, dati wala yan. Ngayon, um, they are placed for sound absorption kasi merong reverberation ng sound. If you can notice that and also nag e siya. <clears throat> next slide po. So, a lot of work needs to be done. No? So we will put uh, panels also dito and we'll make it movable so that may ease the movement as you go out of the sanctuary. And next slide po. So yung lighting natin has improved. How many would say na nakikita nyo na yung ganda ng inyong mga katabi? Yes? 
Amen. So, maglalagay pa po tayo ng mga <clears throat> mga spotlights on on this uh, area and also on the backstage. Uh, para po ma-highlight yung uh, yung speaker at yung presenter and we can see the PowerPoint better. Meron pa rin pong uh, itataas na at lagayan ng mga speakers, uh, mga cables, pasiya uh, cable covers para nakaayos po yung mga kable natin dyan uh, para hindi maapakan. And also, may mga design pa tayo sa mga columns and lighting as well. Then, ito pong stage, uh, we will also rent, rent uh, ang tawag nito? Uh, re-repair po natin yan and lalagyan natin ng carpet for sound absorption din po. And uh, we'll also modify yung ceiling dyan sa may mezzanine and lighting din po niyan. And uh, yeah, and the last is the uh, next slide po. Yan, magkakaroon, papalitan po natin yung railings and yung palitan na po natin yung uh, ng glass uh, barriers dyan po sa, sa balcony. So, hindi po natin pahuhuli ang ating Kids Church. Yes! So, so gagawin po natin some improvement para maging safe no, yung area and conducive for kids to learn and enjoy the place while they are being ministered. Shout out kay Teacher Kat and the team. Hallelujah. Yun. So, doon sa side ng building na yun, we, we have ongoing repairs. Medyo dripping water doon sa mga breakers. And again, tuwing umuulan at kapiling ka moments na naman yan. So, yun. <laughs> so, I, now I'm challenging you. No? I would like to encourage you to give. Sabi nga sa Word of God, God loves a cheerful giver. Di ba our hearts are full of joy when we give to a person, di ba? Parang excited ka na ino-open niya yung gift mo. How much more if you are giving to our God, right? It is our expression of adoration and worship, right? So, when I share about giving, I always remembered yung poor widow, remember? Who gave out of love. Yung poor widow in the first century, talagang sila yung nasa pinakalaylayan ng lipunan, di ba? So, uh, Uh, she gave all she had. She had nothing to live on, yet she gave up out of love. So praise God for, for, uh, for her life, no? And and so, yun kami uh, from the building committee, we are appealing to your generous hearts to be part in rebuilding this faith place, no? This is the project po natin to, hindi po, hindi po ng ilan lang, no? but it is you and I. But uh, ang estimated cost namin is uh, mga 3 million lang naman. Kaya ni Lord yan, di ba? Yeah. Kaya ni Lord. Amen? We have a big God and we can believe Him for that. Amen? Amen. So we are going to give you pledge forms and uh, we want you to prayfully consider and discuss with your family how you want to pledge. no? Para sa improvement ng ating uh, faith place. So ito yung verse na I have in my heart. I have set my affection to the house of my God. Ulitin po natin, I have set my affection to the house of my God. So ito po yung uh, ating sasambitin when when we uh, when we uh, prayfully consider giving, no? And uh, we have uh, an account specifically for building fund and uh, if you have questions, may booth kami sa lobby na pwede namin kayong sagutin. But ito, bonus. There is good news. Ito po yung good news. Tignan natin. Next slide. Ate Amy. Yes. May pledges na po. No? Our pastor, pastoral leadership team and the board of trustees have made faith pledges on top of their tithes, offering, and mission giving. Amen to that. Diba? So, isn't God awesome? Yes? Yeah. Hindi po madali for us to do this, no? The PLT and the board have faithfully put this together uh, to give sacrificially for the house of the Lord. So, ito po kung baga yung first fruit natin ng pledges, no? And we know there will be more, right? Again, let's say, I have set my affection to the house of my God. Let's say this together. I have set my affection to the house of my God. So, 
uh, I'm challenging you about your tithes, your offering. Yung tithes, syempre kay Lord na yan, no? It doesn't belong to me. No? And, uh, and I encourage you to take part of this endeavor for the purpose of enhancing our faith base. Uh, to make this place conducive for worship. Amen ba dyan? Amen. Making disciples, building leaders, and reaching the nations for Jesus. Kaya natin to, right? Amen. Basta sama-sama, kaya natin. And I thank the Lord for all of you, for your generous uh, hearts as a community. Uh, let's, let, let's do this project together. Uh, for those of you who are here at our worship place, you may now drop your offerings here at the offering boxes in front. And for those online, you may deposit on the accounts you can see on the screen. Thank you po and God bless. Let's pray. Father in heaven, maraming salamat po uh, sa pagmamahal niyo sa amin. I thank each and every person here in this place and on those then na uh, participating online. Thank you for the life of God na binigay niyo sa, sa bawat isa sa amin sa inyong pagmamahal sa amin. Now we give to you our tithes, our offerings and pledges. Accept this coming from our hearts that are truly grateful. We come before you with thanksgiving. We come before you with worship. We come before you with joy in our hearts. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. God. God bless you as you continue to give. God bless you as you continue to support the ministries of our church. Plenty of things, good things are happening, I'm telling you. Yesterday, we had uh, the culmination of the Dell class. Kung kayo nandito, shout out sa inyong lahat. Kumaway kaway kayo dyan. Those that are graduating from the current Dell class. I tell you, their projects, uh, they will, we will fully utilize this church. We will fully utilize this building. We will fully utilize our online ministry, which is forever and here to stay na, ang online ministry. And all of that is because of your giving. You serve God by attending, first of all. You serve God by giving. You serve God by praying. You serve God by inviting, right? And you just serve God by giving God all you've got. Praise God. Today, we continue our series on... Uh, Philippians, last Sunday, Pastor Anna started it off. And by the way, it's not just on Sundays, but Thursday nights. We want to encourage you on Thursday night online, Pastor Louie and the other uh, members of his team share also from the letter to the Philippians. So every Sunday and every Thursday. And then Fridays, we have our prayer devotions on Fridays, also from the epistle to the Philippians. So we are now in chapter 2. So, I would like to invite you to read through this text with me, Philippians chapter 2, and I'll be reading from the NIV first, and then later on, I'll try to modify it, kasi masarap yung sa Tagalog kanina, no? Tagalog service, by the way, nag-brown up po kanina dito, uh, right about uh, 10 minutes before the 8 a.m. service, we were all about ready to start, boom, so we all moved to the lobby, and uh, we had our worship service there. And then right around 8.20, the power came back, but we decided to stay there. So, but thankfully now we have the power. Philippians chapter 2, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion. So let me pause right there. In the Tagalog kasi ginawa siyang question form. So, uh, most of us naman here are Pinoy's. Uh, but I will read it in English, but use it in a question form. And I would like you to respond with an Amen. Alright? So let's see. Have you received encouragement from being united with Christ? Okay. Have you received any comfort from His love? Have you received any fellowship in the Spirit? Have you received any tenderness and compassion? Amen. Therefore... Or then, Paul would say, make my joy complete 
by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind, doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So let me pause for a moment. Many, many years ago when we were sending our two adult children to college in Manila, we lived in Binyan, Laguna. And so we decided to rent a condo unit for them near uh, the area. My, my daughter at the time was studying in UP Manila and my son in UST. So we decided uh, uh, para dahil yung babae, para mas malapit lang walking distance. And she was taking up nursing, so minsan pang gabi yung classes niya. So we decided to get a condo unit nearer to her school. So walking distance from UP Manila, PGH. And then our son will just take a jeep to USD. Ganon. So, and every week, Barbara and I would bring food. Uh, would, uh, sometimes we would even, parang, okay, let's, they forgot to clean up the unit, so we'll just clean it up. But after a while, we noticed, every time we go there, it's a mess. They don't fix the bed, they don't fix the couch, they, they don't fix anything. You know, kalat kalat, tapos the leftover food is there. Sometimes the food that we would even bring a week before, hindi kinain, so it's like rotten, it's smelly, and ganyan, ganyan. So finally, we sat them down, the two of them, and the bathroom is dirty and stinky and all of that. And when we would ask them, they'd point fingers at each other. Si ate kasi, ang daming buhok. Ang sagot naman ni ate, ikaw, architect, ang dami mong papel everywhere. So they're like this back and forth, back and forth. So finally, we sat them down and we did the Apostle Paul. Haven't we paid for this condo unit? Have we not sent you to school and paid tuition for you? Have we not fed you? Have we not taken good care of you? Do we buy you good clothes, etc., etc.? So after, yes, yes, yes. So, therefore, <laughs> therefore, be good naman to your parents and to each other. Make our joy complete, Paul would say. So, make the, your parents full of joy, okay? To clean up the, the, ano, the condo, the get rid of all the trash, etc. And, more importantly, get along. Huwag na kayong mag-away, ano ba kayo? Get along. Tell someone you, hoy, we should get along. Alam niyo kung bakit, by the way, roommate kayo sa langit. So pag hindi kayo magkasundo dito, for eternity kayong ganyan. <laughs> so you might as well get used to each other here, right? So going back to the Apostle Paul, he says, take it, you know, be, be kind to each other, don't, don't do anything out of selfish ambition, vain conceit. And then he gives them the reason in your relationship with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to His own advantage or in other translations, something to be grasped. Rather, He made Himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge or confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise God. Let us pray. Lord, we present to your hearts and minds through your Holy Spirit. Would you use your word to shape us, to become more like Jesus. Remove the selfishness in our minds and in our hearts to always put the interests of our brothers and sisters ahead of our own. To always think of how we can be a blessing to others instead of our own. Lord, make us more like Jesus. Amen and amen. How many of you, you want to be more like Christ? Yes? Well, me only? Oh, anyone else? Uh, you want to be more like Christ? All right. Three things that we will learn today about Jesus that hopefully we will copy. Number one, Jesus had titles, but he did not act entitled. There's a difference, by the way. Titles are just a statement of fact. That's your title. That's your position. You have that rank, for example, but you don't have to act entitled. 
Think about Jesus. What were his titles? Son of God. Yet he became son of man. Beloved of the Father. And yet he allowed himself to be mocked by men. He was their master. And yet he washed his disciples' feet. And none of them thought to do it. Think about this for a moment, okay? Nowadays, when foot washing, maybe that's a ceremonial uh, symbolic act that we would do. Maybe once a year during a retreat, we would do that among leaders. But back in the day, foot washing is a daily experience. Why? Because they would go out of their homes and it's dirty, it's, there's a lot of uh, sand and mud and all of, the, all of the grime of the streets. And their sandals are open. Okay, so your feet get dirty. And the first thing you do the moment you arrive where you're going, somebody's house, for example, or you arrive back home, first thing you do before you enter the house is to wash your feet. Now, if you're entering an ordinary house, regular kind of family, KKH, Kanya Kanyang Hugas. Okay, they would put uh, like a basin there. There's like a faucet of some kind. You wash your own feet and then you enter. If you're entering someone who's a little bit higher in society, they may have a servant to do that for you. So when Jesus told the 12, we're going to have Passover in the upper room there in that house, okay? Get everything ready. None of them thought to actually wash their own feet or watch, wash someone else's feet. Try to imagine the Passover which would later on become what we would know as the Last Supper, communion, right? Eucharist. So here is Jesus having the Passover meal with the disciples and looking at them trying to figure out, hmm, may makukonsensya kaya? Meron kaya mag-iisip, ay, nakalimutan nating mag washing. Ako na lang. <laughs> maybe Thomas, maybe Peter, maybe James. None of them did. And so the meal is over. And what does Jesus do? Gets up, picks up a basin, picks up a towel, and starts going one after one after one. Starts washing the feet of the twelve. He is their master, yet he is washing their feet. He was the commander of heaven's armies. The, angel, the angelic host can come at the word of Jesus, just one command. And yet he chose not to call on their help when he was dying on the cross. But there were a few entitled people back in the day. Let me introduce some of them to you. King Herod the Great. King Herod the Great was so insecure that according to historians, not biblical historians, secular historians, so this is confirmed by secular historians, that King Herod the Great had his own relatives massacred. Why? Because he thought they were going to do a coup d'etat against him. So he got them massacred. So in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 2, during the nativity story, when the wise men from the east, what we call the Magi, right? Hindi Magi, okay, pwede rin, pero Magi, pwede na rin, Magi. The wise men arrived, where is he who is born king of the Jews? King Herod said, ha, huh? I'm the king, may bagong hari. <laughs> so what does he tell the Magi? Okay, go and visit, go and worship. Then come back to me, tell me the address. Why? So that I can go and also worship. No. So that he can go and kill the newborn king. But then an angel warns the Magi, the Magi leave, and then King Herod realizes, wait a minute, how long ago was that when those wise men arrived here looking for the newborn king? He figured it's about two years. So what does he do? He orders the massacre of all boys two years and below. In what has become known in history as the Massacre of the Innocents and has become a feast that we call Piesta ng Niños Innocentes. So it is now in history, King Herod the Great. The 12 apostles also were entitled when Jesus was preaching and a multitude followed and it was night, no more food, and then they said, Lord, send everybody home because everybody's going to get hungry. There's no food here. And then Jesus tells them what? You, the 12, you give them food. And here was their response. Huh? Food for all of this. 
one year's wages. Isang taong sweldo. Not just of one disciple, but all 12 of us combined cannot feed everyone to have even a bite. They were unwilling to sacrifice their own comfort and privilege for the sake of others. And then one time they were in ministry the whole day, they were already tired, and a woman knocked at the door where they were staying. Master, please, my daughter is demon-possessed. Please help her. What do the 12 disciples do? Get out of our face. Go home. The disciples were behaving very entitled. When Jesus was walking out to, uh, outward of Jericho and a blind man was screaming, Bartimaeus, Lord, have mercy on me. What do the disciples and the others do? Quiet. We're marching towards Jerusalem. Do not bother us. James and John were two of those 12. They were more entitled than the rest of the, the 12. <laughs> they went to Jesus and said, uh, Lord, when you come back in your kingdom, please prepare, aside from your throne, please prepare two chairs. One on the right, one on the left. So that James the elder can sit on the right, John the younger can sit on the left. And Jesus says, no, we're not going to do that. That's already reserved according to my Father's will. I wonder who will sit there, by the way. We don't know. You know. And so what do they do? They appeal to their mother and their mother appeals to Jesus. Yung hindi nakuha yung gusto, yung nanay naman ang, you know, nag-request. Nakahanap sila ng padrino, ng baker. When you don't get what you're asking for from God, what do you do? Accept it. Because that is God's will. Instead of finding ways or finding others to help you in that process. And of course, Judas was the most entitled of all. Felt so entitled, he even dipped his hand in the offering basket. So that all the offerings, Judas would take from it. And when he did not get his way finally, he just decided to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. They were all entitled. Jesus was the opposite. He had titles, but he did not act entitled. Amen? Magkaiba yun, ha? You can have a title without being entitled. Second, Jesus had privileges, but he did not act privileged. Wow. May iba pa, lang, iba pa rin pala yun. Heaven was his dwelling. That's a privilege. Instead, he came down to earth. Jesus is royalty. He is the king and the son of the king. He himself is the king of kings. Instead, he lived among common folk. Past few days, the world has been uh, memorializing Queen Elizabeth II. And rightly so, right? But she is royalty. Think about her life. She was born in a palace. She was raised in a palace. Everywhere she went, she had an entire entourage. And whenever she is not feeling well, she's got doctors and nurses. Everyone is there. She's surrounded by family and friends during her dying moments. And she dies in a palace. What a wonderful, wonderful life. Jesus was born in a manger. He lived in the little town of Bethlehem and then moved to a backward town called Nazareth. He ministered in a fishing town called Galilee. And he dwelt in other people's houses. You know why? Because he himself said, foxes of holes, birds of nest, the son of man doesn't have a place to lay his head. Meaning, nakikitulog lang si Jesus with his disciples wherever they were. And when he was about to die, where did they put him? In between two thieves. Not family, not friends. Thieves. Those were the immediate vicinity of Jesus when he was dying. And the greatest privilege of all, equality with God the Father. Wow! Let me share a little bit about this doctrine called the Trinity. Alright? Here in Beginning Church, we believe in one God uh, existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each person equal to the other in divinity, eternity, and glory. Pastor Albert, paki-explain pa nga uh, further. No need because all you can do is just watch Saturday night service with Pastor Danny Villa. Yan. Truth or false? Because at least there, he devotes 
half an hour of teaching to the, just one particular doctrine and then another half hour where he will discuss back and forth with two or three other leaders of our church. So we encourage you, maximize that. Attend uh, online our Saturday night service. So Jesus was not privileged, but there were some privileged people in his day. So Jesus' willful and selfless decision to leave heaven, the dwelling place of God and angels, and live on earth, the dwelling place of sinful humans, and die on the cruel death on the cross would lead to the salvation of humanity. Think about this. What if Jesus was privileged and said, nah, not going to do that. God the Father and God the Son talking with each other about coming down to be the Savior of the world. Then Jesus says, nah, not going to do it. I'm not going to leave heaven to live there. Yuck. Kadiri. <laughs> Come on. It says for 30-something years. Surely you can do that. Okay. So, can I be born in a palace? No. Can I live in a large city? Go to a university? No. Okay, when it's time to die, can I at least die surrounded by people who love me? Actually, they will be throwing rocks at you all the way till you die. I'm not sure I want that. <laughs> but thankfully, Jesus did. But there were privileged people in his day. The Pharisees. They loved to parade in the streets wearing their nice robes with phylacteries. Phylacteries are boxes where they would put the text of Scripture put it on their forehead, and put it on their arm, so that uh, everywhere people see it, wow, he really knows the Word of God. Look at him. He has it on his forehead, and he has it on his arm. Very similar to if we would put a bumper sticker on our car, you know, Jesus loves you, right? And then, of course, when you get into a traffic altercation, but Jesus loves you. Look at my bumper sticker. <laughs> So, Pharisees were like that. They love to display their piety even if they don't really practice it. That's why Jesus told the disciples, don't copy the Pharisees because they're only good at showing off their religiosity, but they do not live it out. They love to be greeted everywhere. They love for people to move back when they arrive. They would love for everyone to sacrifice for them, but they would not sacrifice for the other. They consider themselves worthy of heaven and the rest of humanity worthy of damnation. They even refused to mingle with other people so that if they were walking in the street and you, an ordinary person, were walking uh, like magkakasalubong kayo, they would literally go on the other side of the street just to avoid you. Because baka mahawa, ma-infect sila sa iyong sin. That was just how they were. And so they got really upset of, at Jesus. Why? Because what did Jesus do? He would hang out with the people that the Pharisees called sinners. Like the tax collectors, the prostitutes, those people who had lived uh, ugly lives as far as they were concerned. But Jesus Love to hang out with them. In fact, he even went to their house. The house of Zacchaeus. The house of Matthew. And he would willingly engage in conversation with a five-time divorcee living in with another man. The Samaritan woman. Why? Because Jesus was not privileged. And then the third, Jesus is Lord. Yet he came as a servant. What do servants do? Servants obey. And that's why Jesus obeyed His heavenly Father's will to come to earth to save us. Servants put others first. And Jesus put the needs and concerns of other people ahead of His own. So think about this. Jesus was also hungry. Especially after preaching the entire day, He was hungry. And yet He fed the multitudes. He was thirsty. Yet He found time to quench the thirst of the Samaritan woman. He was tired from a full day of ministry. And yet he ministered to the Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was demon-possessed. He was burdened by the thought of his impending death on the night when he was betrayed. The next day he would be crucified. That night, he was at the Garden of Gethsemane after the Last Supper. And he was crying out to God the Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Meaning the cup of God's wrath. It is, if it is possible, let it pass. But not my will. 
but yours be done. And yet, according to Scripture, he found time to pray. Pray for what? Number one, prayed for the disciples. Said, Lord, you, Father, you gave them to me. Preserve them by the power of the name you gave me. Then he prayed for everyone else in that era, in that generation. And then guess what? He prayed for everyone who will come to faith in him for generations to come. That means, even before he died and even before you were born, Jesus was already praying for you. Jesus was praying for you. And in fact, to this day, Jesus is still praying for all of us. So you have the incarnation. God became flesh. The crucifixion, He went to the cross to die for our sins. The resurrection, He rose again. His ascension went back to heaven. Intercession, He sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession, praying for who? For you and for me. To this day. So think about this. Have you ever received a message, Oi, I'm going to have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, or I had a biopsy, and that the result will be known tomorrow? Please pray for me. And how many of us have actually said, yes, I will pray for you, and then you forgot? Let's be honest. That's happened to me. Because I get the text while I'm driving. I get the text when I'm doing something else. And so I respond, but in my mind, I thought I did, and then I forgot. And then later on, I say, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Then I start praying. But Jesus never forgets. In fact, sometimes you yourself forget to pray for your own. Meaning, you get so busy, you shower, you dress up, you run off to your appointment, not even consciously praying. And then you get, mamaya na lang, mamaya na lang. Then you get home, bukas na lang. Then the next morning, mamaya na lang ulit. Then the night arrives, bukas na lang, pagod na ako. You yourself even forget to pray. Jesus always praying for you. Isn't that good? Amen. Give thanks to Him. Thank you, Lord. You're always praying for, for us. And so, Jesus, our Savior and our Lord, was the opposite of all of those who would brandish their quote-unquote lordship to others. He came as a servant. So let's review those three things. Jesus had titles, but He did not act entitled. He had privileges, but He did not act privileged. And Jesus is Lord, yet He came as a servant. What is the result when Jesus did all of that? According to the Philippian text, God exalted Him to the highest place and gave Him the name that is above every name. The principle has not changed, my friends. The only way up is by going down. The only way to be exalted is by first being humble. Jesus laid down that principle. Those who exalt themselves will be humbled. Those who humble themselves will be exalted. And so now, the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians, admonishing them. Why? Because even though they are followers of Jesus, they are still very much human, acting out of their human flesh in selfish ways. So he reminds them, become like Jesus. Let us not act entitled. Let us not brandish around our titles or positions of power, whether in the home, Hoy, lalaki ako. Ako ang masusunod sa bahay. Hoy, you know? ako ang tatay dito. Ako ang masusunod. As, I, as we explained in the parenting session last week, as parents, no? when, when our children are smaller, sumunod kayo. Ako ang parents. Ako ang magulang. Ako ang daddy. Ako ang mommy. Then at some point, you are now equal in height. Sumunod ka. And at finally, sumunod kayo. Kasi mas matangkad na sa'yo eh. You know? And the moment their height exceeds you, you really have lost already some sense of power or authority. That's why we explained last week in the parenting, relationship should now take the place of position of power. When you've developed a relationship, you can continue to influence your children. So let's not act entitled. In the home and the workplace, in society or in church, let us not act privileged. Let us not act as if we are untouchable, insensitive to the pains and sufferings of those around us. There are many more people who have less in life than you. There are many more people who have suffered so much more than any of us have. And so let us pause and reflect before we are tempted to complain, and all of us do. Ay, ang hirap, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Think about how blessed you really are. How blessed you really are that God has taken such good care 
of you. Instead, let us serve. Find ways to bless someone else. Find ways to alleviate other people's pain. Find ways to offer a helping hand. Find ways to offer a comforting word. Go the extra mile in being a servant to others. Can we do this on our own strength? The answer is no. Because on our own, left to ourselves, we are still very human and very selfish. So if you say, for example, ang layo naman ng pupuntahan natin, bakit malayo? Kasi mananalalayuan ka. Even if for other people, hindi naman ganun kalayo. Ang init, bakit mainit? Naiinitan ka eh. Even if others don't feel the same way. We all reference everything else to our own measurement. And so, we may say to ourselves, pero ganun talaga yung buhay. Totoo. But that is why we need Jesus. Because left to ourselves, we will value ourselves higher than others. We will consider our own needs more important than others. We will consider our own schedule as having more value than others. But when Christ rules and reigns in our heart, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be reminded constantly, as Paul would say, consider others of higher value than yourself. Paunahin mo na sila. Amen? Huwag ka nang makipag-compete. Huwag ka nang makipag-unahan. Huwag ka nang makipagsikuhan, makipagbrasuhan. Let others come get one step ahead of you. In fact, the Apostle Paul repeatedly would say that, that that is the essence of the Christian faith is love. The essence of Christian faith is love. Love for God and love for others. And Paul knew what he was talking about. When he wrote Philippians, where was he? He was in jail. He was in chains, deprived not just of freedom, by the way, but probably food, water, and convenience. Think about this. Can you sleep well at night if you are in chains and hungry and thirsty? And th- Masarap kayo matulog ng busog. Di ba no? Kung gutom, nakatulog ba kayo? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi maangal yung tiyan nyo eh. Nagpaparinig eh. Di ba? Kutum, kutum na ako. So Paul, in chains, deprived of freedom, food, water, and many other things. And yet, even in that position, he still wrote four epistles. Wow! Hindi pa pa kung isa lang, apat talaga yung sinulat. Ang galing naman ano. Four epistles. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and a personal letter to Philemon. How was Paul able to do this? Later in the same passage, same letter, in chapter 4, Paul would say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have a good friend who is a psychologist and he said, did it this way. Hold both of your hands up, please. Both hands. I have two hands, the left and the right. Okay. One hand says, I can do all things. That's five words. No? I can do all things. The other hand, through Christ who strengthens me. If you remove one hand and you only have one, I can do all things. That's not true because you cannot. Life will come at you hard and you will fall. On the other hand, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So ganyo ngayon, both hands. Yes. Ganyo. And galawin niyo yung fingers niyo. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Wow. The Apostle Paul also said to live is Christ. That means your entire life is fully surrendered, fully committed, fully submitted to Christ. Becoming like Jesus means to live a Christ-centered life. Can we all stand as our worship team comes? About 20 years ago, there was a movie called The Gladiator. Anybody remember that fantastic movie of Russell Crowe? General Maximus. Wow. That was his character. Then Richard Harris played the role of Emperor Emperor Marcus Aurelius. And then, later on in his career, would win an Academy Award uh, playing the role of the Joker. (laughs) See, uh, see, now I, I miss his name. What is his name? Joaquin Phoenix played the role of the son of the Emperor, the Prince and the Heir, Commodus. The movie begins with a battle. The 
Roman soldiers battling it out with some barbarian tribes. And General Maximus, as general, was leading the fight and won. While there was a battle, however, the son of the emperor, prince and heir, Commodus, played by Joaquin Phoenix, is doing a sword fight with an assistant. <laughs> While the general was literally fighting for his life and for the empire, the son of the emperor was playing sword fight. So when the emperor arrives on the scene, the son, the prince, and heir Commodus wanted the emperor to walk with him side by side in front of all the soldiers. You know, when the emperor walks, everyone just, you know, that's the emperor. That's the king. So everybody bows down. And by walking beside the emperor, the son, the heir, Commodus, who didn't do anything in the battle, but felt entitled because after all, I'm the son of the emperor. If by walking with the emperor, that means they will also bow down to him. But the emperor shoved him aside, took General Maximus' hand, and walked in front of the soldiers, not with his heir or son, the entitled one, but the one who did not want the glory didn't want the honor, was quietly standing on the sidelines, not really minding, I've done my duty, I've done my job, and I'm good with this. The emperor takes his hand and walks in front of the entire army as if to symbolize to everyone, this is what leadership is all about. Not feeling entitled or privileged, but serving. Amen. And as believers of Jesus, we are servants of the Most High God. We can only do it when we live a Christ-centered life. Let's worship the Lord with this song and then we will pray. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it'll always be it's always been you Jesus 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 at the center of
Jesus, you say from my heart, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my Lift up your hands to God right now. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus be the center of your church. other superstar except Jesus. No other name to be exalted. No other name to be worshipped. No other name to be magnified. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any comfort from His love, any fellowship in the Spirit, any tenderness and compassion, then make our joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in mind and spirit. 
Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others ahead of yourselves. Don't just look to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. In all of your relationships, that means in the home, in the church, in the workplace, or everywhere else with your friends, in all of your relationships, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Even though he had titles, he did not feel entitled. Even though he had privileges, he did not use those privileges. He did not act privileged. Instead, he came as a servant. The next time you are tempted to go ahead of someone else for whatever reason, and the, the voice of the Spirit is telling you, let them go. Let them go ahead. It's okay. You know what? Go ahead and let them. Because you never lose when you let Jesus win. You never lose. You never lose when you choose to obey and exalt Jesus at any given moment, at any given time, in any circumstance. If you follow the voice of the Spirit, you'll never lose. Whatever it may be, God Himself will elevate you. You don't have to struggle and fight and push people out or badmouth somebody else, or criticize so that you can get ahead. No, you don't have to do any of that. Just let Jesus rule your thoughts, your words, your actions, and your motives. Lord, today, we just surrender ourselves to you. All of us, including ourselves, the pastors, all of us, none are exempt from this admonition. To have titles but not feel entitled. To have privileges but not feel privileged. Instead, to act as servants. Lord, may we be servants in the home, between husband and wife, serving one another out of love. Parents and children, serving one another out of love. In the church, all of us, serving one another out of love. In society, in the workplace, everywhere else. So that we may exalt the name of Jesus wherever we go so that others may be able to observe. You know, I, I don't always agree with everything they teach, but there's something about how they behave. They behave just like Jesus. And that would be the best compliment we could ever receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God praise? Praise the Lord. Next Sunday, we continue the series. Thursday night, we continue the series. Saturday night, doctrine service. God bless us all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a great week ahead.